This week on the Ritual Misery Podcast, we're going to talk about banging balls with paddles. <laughs> yes, and we are going to have that conversation with Sergeant Muffin. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 278 for Sunday, the 7th of March, 2021. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. We don't matter because matter, I'm going to hit this little button right here. Oh, and of course it didn't come up because that would be just entirely too goddamn simple. Uh, Sergeant Muffin, I'll get you in here in just a second. How you doing, man? <laughs> oh, doing fantastic. There we go. There you are. Shit. Damn it. I, it's, I... It's, it's been a while since we had Sergeant Muffin on the show. I'm so glad to welcome you back. Thank you for joining us to have a conversation about pinball today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's something I uh, care about deeply and can drone on and on to the point of boring everyone. <laughs> now, I will say this is usually when we have somebody on, it's because of something they've done or because of something that interests us about talking to them this is like the first guest we've had in in what what would you call it's been in response to something that we did because we've had sergeant muffin on 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 like ready to go like hey man we're gonna have you on as soon as this happens and it finally okay. happened <laughs> kent finally got his legends pinball yeah yeah, and um, I mean, Sergeant Muffin and I have talked about pinball in the past, and um, I didn't have a whole lot of like recent firsthand experience with pinball, and um, I wanted to have him on once I had that recent experience, and that's happened. So here it is. Uh, we got Sergeant Muffin on to talk about it. Um, but before we get into pinball, Amos, how has your week been? I... Well... So, so what I've basically done this week is decided to start uh, streaming more often, and I didn't know what mm -hmm. to stream. And I wanted, I've been wanting to stream for a while. I tried video games, and that's just boring. I'm not a good video game talker person. Plus, I suck at playing video games, so I'd rather do that privately. <laughs> um, <Right. laughs> and I'm gonna uh, suck in private. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you are. Uh, is, that, is, <laughs> is that better than sucking in I public? Mean, that's, that's the. Yeah, that's the place to do it. <laughs> um, and I also have this huge backlog of photos to uh, cull and edit. So I started streaming some culling and editing, uh, sometimes on Twitch, sometimes in the Discord, but either way. And then uh, when I published Rich, the, the episode that just went out today, when I published that last night, I did all that editing in our Discord, uh, live streaming it in there. So just kind of opening it up and, and letting people have the... Uh, you know, have have a have a view into what it's like living in the world of me. Yeah, well, and I'm glad you're doing that because I, I think for a couple of years now I've been bugging you uh, because you've been a, a really avid uh, hobbyist photographer, and I'm like, I want to see your work, dude, and you've just been slow trickling that out to the masses. So I'm real, I'm real happy to see that you're doing that. Yeah, it caused me to fire up uh, my Instagram and actually start using it, and I've been getting some decent uh, responses back. So, yeah, right on, Sergeant Muffin. Are you are you much of a photographer yourself? Oh gosh, no. Um, I you know over time, if you take enough photos, you, you learn a few things, but nothing uh, nothing professional. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, th and that's yeah, that's totally uh, me. I am. I like taking a snapshot here and there, but like, yeah, I would not consider myself a photographer <laughs> by any stretch. Uh, I, I would consider myself a photographer, but not a professional, although I have been paid for my work. So technically speaking, I guess I'm <laughs> a professional, but I don't know. I, I yeah. like taking pictures and uh, when and I can see the, the, the progress that my photography has been making. Um, and then taking this year of just sitting in the house is really it's really made me rusty. And oh, my gosh, I've been chasing lights and it hasn't been turning out and been doing some other things. And. I really got to get out there and do it. So in order to kind of keep that inspiration going, I've been going through old pictures and, and culling them out and doing some creative edits. And uh, and it's been a lot of fun. So I, I, I love it. It's great. Uh, and in case you're wondering, uh, Ethan Kane, 
I think it's just Ethan Kane, maybe Ethan Kane 77 on Instagram is where you can find me. And I have pictures going to, I have a new picture going to post every day for the, until my birthday, which is next month. So a a new picture every single day. And this week is soccer week. So every day this week, I'm going to post pictures of my kids with, uh, with uh, playing soccer because it's spring break and this is when soccer season is supposed to start. So little theme action for you. Nice. Uh, what about you, Dan? Have you been up to some cool stuff lately? Oh, I guess, yeah. Since I moved into this house um, in August, been slowly getting things the way I like. And uh, just like uh, two weeks ago, updated this office. I got photos on my uh, Twitter of it. And then just now I'm trying to work on getting the basement game room set up. And uh, just today ordered a MAME cabinet. So, yeah, excited just to... <laughs> <laughs> keep adding. I'm already at what eight or nine pinballs, a pool table, and then a 43 inch main cabinet. That so the... is freaking awesome. Oh, yeah, man. I I did something this weekend that I absolutely hate. Um, I haven't done it for a long time. Um, I went to a car dealership and spent the whole afternoon there, and I was this hated it. was this for you or Steph? It was for Steph. Okay. Uh, okay. So was, that makes it even worse. Buy a new car. Yeah, that yeah, makes it even worse. Buy a new car for a while, but she has not had. Well, until yesterday, she had not had the dealership experience. So I was there for moral support and um, you know, kind of just helping her through the process. Did, have you checked on her today? Is she okay? Like, oh, she's she's thrilled now. Like, okay. she's happy to have the new car. Okay, and, and all so that you, you didn't have to like remove shoelaces and and take away, <laughs> you know, lock the closet and all that kind of stuff afterwards. Th- there was some concern yesterday. <laughs> now, that, uh, now that the experience has passed and she's had a chance to sleep on it, it's it's all positive. So. <laughs> and uh, and if you don't mind me asking, what'd she get? Uh, she got a 2020 uh, Honda Civic. I don't remember which specific model. Uh, but she is she's thrilled about it. She had her eye on that model for quite some time, uh, did some test drives, and she was like, yep, I've made up my mind. This is the one I want. Uh, she walked in with a PAL, a pre-approved loan, yep. with a really good rate. Uh, so the, the, um, you know, the financing piece was already taken care of, so that cut off probably like two hours of the, the hell that is dealership time. Um, so it, all in all, it wasn't that bad. I think we were there total like four hours maybe, which is like, I think record time for me for a car buying process. Um, so it was, it wasn't too bad. It could have been much worse. Nice. Okay. So, but yeah, yeah. Happy result. Good deal. Yeah. What, what about you guys? Have you guys uh, had a car buying experience in, in recent time? Yeah, for me, um, only thing I've been, we bought two company vehicles, but I'm still riding in my 2005 GMC. So I'm going <laughs> to drive it into the ground till the Cybertruck gets here next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've been, I've been rocking my, my 2008 Mustang for quite a while now, probably five years, eight or nine years. At this yeah. Moment. It's definitely more than five. It's, yeah. it's probably it's inching up on a decade at this point. Um, um, I don't know if I'm going to drive it till the wheels fall off or if I'm actually going to bite the bullet and, and make a dealership run for myself. But I, I don't know. My, we'll see. My wife and I both just bought new cars and we just both, we both, well, we sold cars and we bought cars. So it was basically a, a, a one for one trade essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, even though we only, we traded one, but then we sold another and then we bought two. You, you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I sat with my wife the other night for an hour in her new, uh, her new Pacifica, just showing her all the options because she got the the Pinnacle package. It's got all the bells, uh, all the whistles, and then a bunch of kazoo's thrown in. Um, <laughs> and she didn't understand how to use hardly any of it. Like it, it's auto automatically parking. It's got the distance cruise control thing. Uh, it's got the yeah. auto yep. stopping. It's basically uh, what is it a, a level level two automatic driving like you can let go of the wheel and it'll essentially do its thing Mm -hmm. you know lane assist yeah Yeah. um yeah steph's car has all that all that stuff too it's craziness fun actually figuring those things out yeah it's craziness um but she she didn't know how to use any of that so i kind of went through and and uh at least explained some of the stuff to her and set some of the options where she wanted it 
the biggest problem she had was picking a profile because on her on her center dash on her media center you can make a profile with an avatar and everything else to remember all your settings and all that stuff. And we went through, I think every single option on there and eventually just came back to the white circle with a black S in the middle, uh, which was the default. Cause she was like, I don't like any of those. <laughs> <I'm> like, okay. <laughs> so yeah. All every, right then. <laughs> every, op- every option to return to default, which is, you know, optimal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Um, that's about it, man. That uh, deal, and her her tr- purchasing experience was much more harrowing than mine because we did not walk in there with pre-approved. With, uh, with mine, we did. So it was basically like, yeah, I want that truck, um, and I want it this way, and I want it uh, this date. And they were like, done. This, it pulled. Yeah. It came off the truck, and they called me the day it pulled off the truck off the train, and said it's here. And I said I'll be there tomorrow morning. Yeah. <laughs> Have so. either of you guys seen the TV show? It's a new TV show called Superman and Lois. There are only two episodes in. I have not. Yeah. Interesting concept. It's it's available for free. It's on CW. You can get the app on like every platform or watch it on the web. No account needed. Um, it's it's it, so it's set basically in in like the quote future. So it's it's modern day. Um, but it's Superman and Lois after they're married and they have teenage boys. And it's basically the the idea of the show is what is it like to find out when you're a teenager that your dad is Superman? And like it's very interesting. Now it's got it's it's on CW, so it's got some of those like uh those tropes of like, you know, teenage angsty you know, the pseudo drama or melodrama, I guess. Um, so there is some of that, but there's also uh, like genuine uh, like emotion points. And there's also like a kind of a comic booky sci-fi thing going on in the background where Superman has to deal with a, you know, a new enemy and all this kind of stuff. So it's actually pretty interesting. It's only two episodes in, but um, if, if that sounds interesting to you, I say give it a shot because it's a hundred percent free. Cool. Do the kids yeah. get superpowers? Uh, I don't want to spoil uh, the answer to that question. Oh, okay, well, then I, I will rephrase my question Well, in, into a statement. If they have two teenage kids and one gets superpowers and the other one doesn't, talk about a sibling rivalry. Like, like fuck off with all that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even have siblings, and I would not want that. Like, that's not, no. Yeah, well, I, I'm not going to say whether or not that comes to pass, but uh, I say give it a shot. <laughs> okay. You know what else we should give a shot to? What's that? A game. What time is it? Ken. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Ken's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. I only agree with the Stephen Cogswell part of that. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. So our game today is called Rock My Balls. So I'm going to name uh, bands, like well-known musical acts, and you're going to tell me if there is a pinball game, a real pinball game, uh, uh, themed on that musical act. Um, I didn't real. I knew that there was... the. Uh, a few of them out there, but uh, I didn't realize how many pinball yeah, there's games. There's something. a lot. Yeah, um, Dan, you're our guest. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the option to go first or second. Oh, I'll go second. I gotta see this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kent, what you All got? Right. All right, Amos, is this a real pinball cabinet? Guns and Roses. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, you are correct. Yeah, I've There's played two it. of them actually. I have one in the basement. Yeah, uh, I've I've and actually I've, played yeah, one. And I figured Dan's definitely got the the leg up on. Oh the, yeah, on well, and that's how these are always designed. Whoever our guest is, even if we don't have a guest, they have the leg up. Typically, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I try to make it a little more challenging for Amos than, than the guest usually. All right, uh, Dan, your first one, Kiss. Yes, two of them. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right, Amos, Metallica. Yes. 
<laughs> yes? Question mark. Um, yes, there is a Metallica cab. Okay. <laughs> Dan, have you have you played Metallica? I have it on the virtual one, so it's you can kind of get the feeling for it, but it's not the you know the real experience. Right. Yeah, I have not played the Metallica table, uh, but I really want to because I've seen gameplay of it and it looks freaking amazing. Oh, and yeah. they've got a they've got a couple different versions of it. This one's Stern, I think. I think Stern yes. put it out uh, a yeah. few years ago. And uh, there's a couple different versions of the table. Uh, there's like a premium edition that's basically the same table, but they added some bells and whistles and and different uh, goals and things like that. And it looks freaking awesome. And of course, the music is fantastic oh, because yeah. duh, it's got like all, you know all the greatest hits of Metallica on it. It looks mm-hmm. amazing. All right, uh, this one is for Dan. Nirvana. No. Very good. Very good. I ser- I, I figured that there would have been, and I searched the internet. Like, there's got to be one. And well, no. The thing is, give it time. Band themes are usually a very good seller. If you're talking about putting a machine in a bar, people will, you know, relate to it. Even in arcades, it, people will flock to that. Movies and bands. Yep. Yep. Hundred percent. All right, back over to you, Amos. Iron Maiden. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there's anything out there that Iron Maiden hasn't put their brand on. So yes, of course they have. <laughs> well, and there's there's two. I mean, it's like one and a half. I I can't recall. There's an old old game called Iron Maiden, which was an original theme. Um, and then there was one now recently, Iron Maiden. That's fantastic. All right. Nice. Um, Dan, your next one is ACDC. Yes. Yes. Like, there's got to be more than one of those. I think there's just one. But they yeah, have I've only found the, sweet, one. The, the one that has a big bell in it. You hit it and you hear the, you know, just like from that uh, song. Can't oh, remember all the names nice. of their songs, but it was, yeah. Really Hell's good. Bells. Hell's yeah, Bells, yeah, we yeah for sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, Amos, your next one is Megadeth. I, I I I would have to say yes. You would have to say yes. Yeah. And I have to tell you that you're wrong. Damn it. It's not a mega death table. <sighs> um I would have I would probably guess the same thing though cuz like I mean of course Megadeth has a machine, but no they do not. I would think that'd make a hell of a machine though. Oh yeah. Like some of the riffs and everything else like you hit the uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I, I would think that would be a machine. It, it probably will be in the future. The, this this game probably will not be accurate in five to ten years. <laughs> There's because the ones that don't exist probably will. All right, Dan. How about Dolly Parton? Yes. <laughs> yes. A really old machine, but it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it, 90s. I think was Dolly yeah. Parton, or was it older than that? Well, it, if I recall, I remember some of the stuff older, like the older style of play, so it could have been like 70s or 80s. Mm. Again, I'm yeah. just going from memory. I it's, But I remember it being an older style one, like around yeah. like late 70s type technology and sound. Okay. So, Amos, speaking of, of older acts, what about Elvis? Hmm. I um I'm gonna say no, because because Graceland has been pretty tight about stupid shit with Elvis. Mm, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you you're wrong. First of all, there is an Elvis machine. Um, but I was I was actually gonna comment that Elvis is one of those brands as well. That um, there's not much out there that hasn't been um, Elvis branded. Um, so yeah, there is there is an Elvis machine. All right, and for the final one, Dan, Leonard Skinner. Nope. <laughs> that is correct. That is correct. There is not a Leonard Skinner machine. But that's another one that I could see happening at some point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that is the game. Uh, Dan wins with five, five out of five. And Amos, you got three out of five for a total combined score of eight, which means that you guys beat the beat. Bob, tell them what they've done. You beat the D. Back to you, Daniel. Uh, 
thank you. So, uh, uh, flavor toothpaste. For that this. was a flavor toothgate. Tooth, tooth, yeah, flavor toothpaste. <clears throat> flavor date. Yeah. <laughs> flavor date. Yeah. Um, so Dan, you um, you were talking about your game room in the basement, mm-hmm. and you said that you've got um, w- actually which which uh, machine did you say you have? The Guns and Roses. So Guns and Roses, right? Y- yeah. So they had one in the '90s that was uh, designed with I forgot the designer, but Slash also helped because he's a big fan of that. So mm-hmm. the one now just came out from Jersey Jack, which is now it, they were in Jersey, but now they're in Chicago with every other company. Uh, but yeah, they're rolling those out right now, and Slash also helped, so it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, he's definitely he is definitely hype about the pinball. Um, yeah. So what what other what other machines do you have? Okay, well this year I picked up um, total of well I guess five new ones or different ones that I haven't had. Um, one of them is Six Million Dollar Man, and that one was from 1978 or 79. Um, and then um, Williams Flash, which is a, around the same year. Um, fun fact, the old ones are a little more prone to breaking, you know, all the old stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a rectifier that needs to be replaced on it. Mm. Um, and then uh, I got Jurassic Park, uh, the newer Stern one. Again, that's another theme that had uh, two themes. They had one mm. back in the 90s. I get, well, actually, more than two, if you count like Lost World and, you know, some of the other mm. movies, but. Yeah, mm-hmm. added that one, and um, and then Star Wars. Star Wars was one from a couple of years ago, and uh, that one surprisingly is one of the most popular ones because it's a lot easier to understand. I don't, I don't know if you kind of feel this way. Some of these new machines are very complicated if you actually want to play competitively. You know, the right, old ones right. were, hey, just shoot this, make this, you know, fill up with lights, and then collect. You know, and yep. now it's more. Oh my gosh! You have to read a book and play it for like ten days to figure out really how to go about it. Yeah, for sure. Which which Star Wars machine did you get? Is it the comic art one or the just like no, the standard Star Wars? The uh, before the it's the same pinball as that one, but yeah, just with the regular artwork. And I got it quite oh. a bit cheaper because it was a uh, from a guy's house. Uh, drove about hour and a half. Um, wanted to get four of them. He was selling, but he only had three left. Hmm. Nice, very nice. Um, yeah, Amos, what is your um, what what is your pinball experience like? Uh, are you much of a, a a pinball player yourself? I put the quarter in, the ball drops down. I pull the plunger, I let go. The ball the ball goes back into the hole. <laughs> and you do that three yeah. times, call the day, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once in a while, I'll I'll mess up and it'll hit a bumper or something, make some noises, and some numbers will come up, and then it falls in the hole. I don't I don't, I don't know. Like it I sometimes makes a loud snap sound, and then I can play again. It's it, yeah, it's yeah, sometimes, and yeah, I I'm, I just suck at pinball. Like I've tried a few times, and it's just not. Like especially digital pinball, I always think that I'm timing it just right, and, it, and, and I'm not. Mm. Yeah, when when I was a kid, I wasn't really that much into pinball. Um, with with well, with one one small exception, my grandpa in his basement had an old Fonzie pinball machine, and uh, I played the crap out of that thing uh, when I was a kid. And for most of the life of that machine, or at least you know in my experience, the uh, power. Uh, didn't work. I think the the power supply died on it or something like that. So it didn't keep score or anything. I was just just smacking the ball, you know. Um, and I had a little bit of fun with that. But as far as like going to an arcade and playing pinball, not so much when I was a kid. It was when I when I got older, like after, you know, after like into adulthood, that when I would go to an arcade, I found myself gravitating more toward pinball than like classic arcade. And I think most of that is because the the mystique of going to an arcade and playing arcade games kind of has been softened because of the, you know, home consoles and and playing on PCs and stuff like that, where pinball is a different story. That's a physical thing that you cannot, uh, you know, you can't recreate that on a PlayStation, not, not in any, uh, you know, level of realism, I guess, I guess you can say it's a different experience. Uh, But these days, with 
with uh, virtual pinball machine like emulators, basically, um, it's it, it's kind of a different game now. Um, I've got a Legends pinball uh, that actually I can uh, I can throw that a link to that in the chat. Um, but uh, this I was real interested to get this thing um, because the the level of emulation is uh, almost as perfect as you can get. Uh, for you know for not being an actual physical real um, mechanical machine um, not only are the graphics superb but it's also got uh, accelerometers so that it, it tells when you nudge the machine so it responds accordingly it's got force feedback so that it feels like like a machine clanking around uh, the sound is very good the uh, ability to put basically any pinball table on this thing um it's and and for only like i think i paid i don't know five six hundred bucks for it or something like that um it has uh revolution revolutionized my idea of 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 having pinball in my house well one um, question Dan, comes to mind hey how many uh tables do you have on it did it come ship with any yeah so it ships with 22 uh, 22 built-in tables with with the option to purchase more, um, but it also has a uh, they call it BYOG. It's a bring your own games uh, feature where you can hook up a PC mm. to it and you can play because so, there's a lot of a um, lot of uh, like PC emulation for pinball games. Like uh, uh, you got Visual Pinball, you got uh, what is it VFX, um, Future Pinball. There's a bunch of them out there. And um, you can get all kind. You can get like thousands of tables for these things. And if you hook your PC up to the Legends Pinball, you can you can emulate it right there on the table. And a lot of them actually have the um, uh, like all of the capabilities, like to to give the force feedback and all of that sort of stuff. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that uh, is what, impressive. Yeah, Dan, what what is your experience with? Uh, with uh, like pinball emulation. Oh, sure. So I played around with actually virtual or visual pinball back when mm. it was, what do they call it? Tech beta six in like early 2000. Oh, so I was just having fun. I was learning visual basic actually, and not knowing it because uh, of course, visual pinball uh, in visual basic, that's the, you know, the naming. Uh, so I would play around, I'd make some tables. Um, and from there, then I realized, wait, Oh, you can actually people recreate tables and they have a thing called VPIN MAME where you can run the MAME emulator for a pinball. So I'm like, oh wow, hey. And then what I did is I started downloading all the ones of the place I was going to in, in Appleton. And yeah, mm. I'm like, oh wow, this is this is amazing. It's really close. So it was kind of cool. And then um you can play around with uh the table you can add a wall so if you don't want it to drain you can always put a wall at the bottom or you know i, I want to try to get through the the whole game to see um mm. <laughs> and then i learned uh some some tables actually intentionally drain the ball to get you out of a molding you know so i had to build like a little thing when i press uh the the nudge button it lower the wall and then it raise it back up but yeah oh it was it was amazing and now with what i got in the basement i have the virtual pinball cabinet too and that one's set up mostly with visual pinball stuff, mm -hmm. just because that's what I know and it's easier. Um, but I had at one point 153 tables on it. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. it was a lot of choices, but also a, a real pain to get them all working. I don't know if you've mm -hmm. had that pleasure of doing any custom ones yet, but. No, not yet. I haven't, I haven't played around with any of that just yet. I've, because it's, it's fairly new. I've had the thing like two weeks now, I think. Oh. Um, I'm I'm pretty happy with the 22 tables that I, I know I won't be in the future. I'll be itching to put some more on there. But right now, it's got the 22. Um, they're they're all from Gottlieb, so they're they're classic Gottlieb tables. Um, right now, TX Sector is the the one that I'm enjoying. Um, another thing that's that's really fun about this cabinet is that it it's it's internet connected, and At Games has set up worldwide leaderboards. So oh, if yeah. you yeah, so if you have a Legends pinball, you can compete against other people. And there's also there's going to be a capability. Actually, I'm not sure if it does this now, uh, but the at games uh, like arcade environment or whatever has uh, what do they call it? 
lobby. I think they I think they call the feature lobby, where you can actually create a friends list and play with other people. And I think the pinball cabinet has that, but I haven't tried it out yet. Okay. Um, but yeah, like uh, with TX Sector, I'm I think I'm number three on the world leaderboards. Oh, so, fantastic! Wow. Yeah. So I'm yeah. So I'm I'm having a blast with that. But yeah, at some point in the future, I'm gonna want to add, uh, you know, especially like, you know, more modern uh, tables, and especially like the, uh, you know, branded things, you know, like uh, you know, like Metallica or Jurassic Park or Star Wars or you know, stuff like that. I'm I'm gonna get that itch at some point. Yeah, and where you run into a problem now, and you guys have seen, is the newer pinballs use full TV screens or monitors instead of a dot matrix screen. So that yep. they do have the option to emulate. I've seen people do it, but I'm, I just imagine the amount of annoyance going through and getting the old ones to work. Mm -hmm. I can just imagine, you know, instead of a ROM file that's only, you know, between 1 to 30 megs, now you got one that's like 5 gigs. Mm. That's a fair point. That that is a fair point because they do, they do uh, like virtualize the you know DMD. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's you know you get all of the elements of the game. So you've got the so you've got the main screen, uh, which is like a oh geez what's the um, I can bring up the dimensions here. Um, it's a let's see. Uh, the play field is a thirty two inch uh, LCD. And then the back glass is a 15.6 inch LCD, and that one, uh, you know, it'll it'll bring up the, you know, like the, you know, typically what you would see on the back of the board with the like scoreboard and things mm -hmm. like that. But it also recreates any DMD uh, stuff that it had going on. Um, so it's actually, I mean, the the emulation is is fantastic for what, the um, what is for those, DMD those dot matrix it's, display. Gotcha. Yeah, pretty standard feature on on uh, arcade games, um, but yeah, uh, so it's, it's it's pretty neat. But I can imagine if you're trying to to port something, you know, create a ROM for you know a main ROM for it, like that's uh, that's got to add an additional layer of challenge. Well, and what I got in mind is an actual real plasma DMD from a '90s Williams mm. table, and it goes into a driver board. That needs extra power, and then it goes to a thing and converts it to USB, which then goes to the computer for a serial interface. It's it's so many steps. But the cool part is you can install a special MAME version that will actually, instead of outputting the display to your screen, actually routes it to the real display, so you see an exact recreation on it. That is that is freaking awesome. Yeah, and oh, uh, looking at uh, looking at that machine too. Uh, I don't know if you knew this, but the fact that there's only uh, Gottlieb tables. Uh, were you around to see what happened with Williams? They uh, they pulled a dick move uh, trying to handle the licenses for their tables. There was the uh, pinball arcade game on Steam and you know all the platforms. They had tons of Williams tables, and then out of nowhere the people who own the rights to that. And I don't know if it's, I don't think it's Williams themselves anymore. I think it's like a, some sort of holding group or. Yeah. Um, I think, well, Farsight studios brought up, bought up a lot of the, the old licenses. So it might be them. I'm not sure. No, they're the ones who lost it all. They oh, is weren't. That, oh yeah. They lost the rights. So after a certain day, if you didn't buy it yet, you'll never be able to get them. So the pinball arcade now is very empty because they went and went to Pinball FX3, the mm. that studio, and said, "Hey, here you go. Work with this." So it's just mm. you know they're chasing money, but uh, I don't know. It's just that's a real that's a real sour taste. Yeah, it, yeah, and man, the pinball world is is it's kind of in a mess right now because there used to be a lot of of pinball companies, but then they've all pretty much consolidated into. Um, uh, you know, like one or two companies at this point. Um, Stern is still around, and they're they're the big dog in the market. But uh, other than that, like, I mean, are, well, are there actually... any studios other than just like a couple of like small little indie things? Yes, they're they're going back. So you know, kind of uh, what we saw was the same as the phone companies. You know, there was this huge conglomerate, um, mm. you know, and then it was buying up all the others. So Stern, I guess, I, and again, going from memory, I can be wrong, but. Um, Data East, um, you know, Williams, all that, either they were acquired or they took some of the talent or, you know, Williams actually 
converted from doing just that to doing slot machines because way more money in that. So th that's what they've stuck to. And when you see WMS gaming, which I don't know if that's part of scientific games, but either way, it's just, you know, they're <laughs> handle just rolling in money with all that. And sure. uh, now, yes, you're right. Stern is probably number one for the sheer volume. Jersey Jack, which was once a Stern distributor, started doing their own games. Um, ah. And now they're the ones doing Guns N' Roses, dialed in. They got some talent from back in the day. Um, so they have known designers. So machines feel more like you expect. And then now there's also Spooky Pinball out of Wisconsin that they just hmm. did. Uh, was it their third, probably fifth even, pinball, Rick and Morty. They actually licensed a really ah. good theme, but they sold out within hours. So I couldn't get one, and I'm really pissed because um, there, it, of course, there's family friendly mode, and then there's adult mode beeped, and then there's adult mode, and it is highly offensive. <laughs> and, and I don't know to what level. I mean, I I want to say something, but I think you probably can't say it on Twitch. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just uh, skip it. But we, essentially, like the the we, we we've said the game, we've said all the things on Twitch, and they haven't said shit. So okay. Well, it, and it's, I mean, it's them. So the, <laughs> the plumbus, you know, that weird looking, whatever toy thing, the plumbus in Rick and Morty, mm -hmm. when you jostle the pinball, you, it shows a thing inside the pinball of the plumbus just sitting there detecting a tilt. And if you like destroy, it, it's like, oh, your plumbus is now Blair Flarp. That's a tilt. <laughs> and then, um, and then, uh, was it Rick's like, well, you fucked that one up right in the fucking ass. Are you happy? Are you fucking happy? You fucking deep, whatever. Fuck. You just start swearing. <laughs> <laughs> And you have to sit there and listen to it. Oh, it's so funny. That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. I, uh, Stephen Cogswell in chat said uh, uh, you were talking about uh, companies buying up all the, all the properties and then making them unavailable. It was like uh, Pinball Wizards of the Coast as a show title. And I think that's pretty fucking good. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Uh, man. Speaking of Wizards of the Coast, hopefully that. That Dragonlance stuff is actually ironed out because I'm really itching for some new uh, new Dragonlance content for Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. Anyway, um, what was the uh, what was the first uh, first pinball game you guys remember playing? Because I remember first pinball game I played was some machine with some. It was like uh, 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 pin up girl themed. And that's the okay. reason I played it because I was like <laughs> nine and I liked seeing scantily clad chicks on on Movies. a video game yeah yeah unfortunately it's really hard to uh like figure out which one that is because that was kind of the theme back then mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah well yeah and yeah. pinball machines were most popular in bars at the time mm -hmm. probably so that was you know right on theme uh, my the first one i remember playing is probably that fonzie machine the happy days machine that my grandpa had in the basement but as far as like you know a full up uh, because that machine was that wasn't designed for commercial use. That was actually built for like home home use and whatnot. Um, but my first like commercial experience with pinball, I couldn't even say, man, it was probably uh, just I mean something I don't want to say generic, but something that's like not uh, you know not based on an IP or whatever is probably just a you know, something with poker and cards or something. <laughs> probably, yeah, probably, probably, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dan, do you do? You, do you have any kind of memory, like early memory of? Yes, and again, I don't know the order, but I do remember in elementary school, I was spoiled because my grandma or my mom would pick me up for lunch every day. I don't know why they caved to that. Maybe I didn't want to, and I cried about it. But either way, uh, down the street was the local uh, drive-in restaurant, and uh, mm. they had a pin bot, which was you know the old creepy synthesizers, you know, for the voice. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, that one I remember playing not that many times but i'd sit there and stare at it waiting for the order um mm. <laughs> that's that is one thing about uh about being in an arcade and, and watching playing people playing games like when you're watching someone play pac-man or whatever else like it, there's really not a lot of tension until they're way up there you know but pinball it always seems like there's tension right away because you're basically just half a second of gravity away from losing whatever it is you think you have going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I've been playing a lot of TX sector. And uh, the game is actually pretty simple. Like, 
the goals and everything are, are pretty straightforward. And I think that's probably why I like playing it. But yeah, like I'll get on a roll. Like I'll have a multi-ball a couple times in a, in a row and like I'm racking the, the points up and then it's over. Like then it's just the ball drains and it's like, what the fuck? Like, no. <laughs> um, but w- one of the one of the skills that I'm really really been working on lately is nudge, uh, because when I would play in an arcade, I was always too nervous to do a whole lot of nudging because I didn't want to tilt the machine and lose my quarter. Right. Um, but p- playing virtually is like you can try it. You can t- take it to right up to the limit and <laughs> and not get that tilt. You know. And and if you do, so what? You play again. You don't have a. You don't have to spend a quarter or anything. You just keep playing. I'm uh, interested to see how Kent's uh, virtual his uh, his Legends pinball experience translate translates into actual pinball machine uh, yep. uh, usage when we go to Dan to throw his housewarming party. That's right. Yeah, and I was actually <laughs> I was actually thinking about this because I had to go by default the the accelerometers are turned off on the machine, mm. and I had to go I had to go into the settings to to figure out how to turn it on and like you can adjust the sensitivity and all that sort of stuff, and I it. it took me a few minutes to get it tweaked and I wanted to, because it's got the nudge buttons on the side and okay, that's cool and all, I guess, but like, I don't want to learn to use those nudge buttons because if I, if I get used to doing that, I I go to a real machine, especially if it's like the same table, I'll I'll think I'm a badass and I'll roll up to the real physical machine and then I'll suck because I don't know, I don't know how to nudge properly. (laughs) Like, mm-hmm. like, dude, why is this dude trying to nudge with his middle finger and lightly pressing the right. side of the board? What the hell's going on with this guy? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, what What about you, Dan? Are you Are you a nudger? Yes. So, <laughs> as a kid, I was always too afraid to. Um, you know, sir. You know, like, there's one place I know it would be understood because the guy who ran the place clearly, you know, knew the game and all that. But there was pocket change. I don't know if that was a chain or not, but we had a pocket change arcade all around the area back in the 90s. And the employees, I don't think they understood. If, if I was to do that, they'd probably tell me to get out of there. You know, it's like, you're breaking the machine. I'm like, no, no, that's, that's you're supposed to. Um, and that's why there's a tilt. If you do it too hard, you know, it'll it'll let you know. Yeah, yep, exactly. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I do it that effectively. Um, I have done what they call a death save, and um, that's where if it's draining, you smack it super hard as it's draining down the trough, and it actually bounces up into the flippers again. But you yeah. have to hit it hard enough that it's not going to give you the three warnings to a tilt. But it's uh, <laughs> I've seen it done, um, yeah, and it is. I haven't been crazy. able to pull that. Yeah, I haven't been able to pull that one off yet. But the um, the uh, what are they called? The the lanes on the left and right where mm-hmm. where it'll actually go into a drain. I, I've gotten fairly decent at, at doing saves like that. But yeah, like you said, if you do it too many times, yeah, you're going to get the tilt. So it's going to drain anyway. Yeah. But now I, with my Jurassic Park, I just do it because the uh, the tilt warning is ah, 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 <laughs> the computer screen. <laughs> oh, I love it. The whole graphic. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. On TX Sector, because it, it, it's like a it's a science fiction theme and it's all about teleporting. Um but the, so there's all these like really cool sci-fi sound effects and whatnot, and the the tilt warning on that one is is literally a computer voice going warning, warning. <laughs> so. Nope, I would uh, no <laughs> nope. I remember being in an arcade and you'd have a crowd around somebody playing pinball and they'd be you know just jamming it out and racking up, getting close to high score, and someone would just come up come up beside him and just like kick a table or kick the uh, the, mm. the leg, you know, just to get the tilt, just to stop him. And then fight would break that out, and I'm such, like, "Yeah, I was gonna say that is such a dick move. That is yeah. like, well, this is Southern California in the '80s, it. so everything was a dick move." Yeah. Right. <laughs> 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 All right. Um. So now, Dan, when we talked to when we originally talked to you about doing this, you were like, "Oh, digital pinball. Uh, I've got I've got thoughts on that." And I was, and I, talk, I told Kent, and he was like, "Well, we'll have to see how it goes." Would you be interested in in having one of these Legends pinball machines now hearing Ken's proclamations about it? Okay, so the the hard part about this is I already have a full-size cabinet that has a 42-inch screen in it, Mm -hmm. so it's bigger. Um, So I don't really need that. 
But that being said, when I got that, I sold my F-14 Tomcat from 1987, uh, the pinball, and then I built this one. So I had a guy build a cabinet from scratch, two mm. spec of a ultra wide cabinet so I could fit a bigger TV screen um, and then put it all together. But I don't know. I mean, I really appreciate being able to play everything. But then you realize after playing it for a while, it feels real until you play a real one and then you want to throw it out a window <laughs> uh, and that's the thing and, and it sucks because i really love it but right now my virtual one works fine but i haven't had it plugged in other than a couple times since i've been here so like it's been a half year it's just sitting unplugged in the corner hmm. yeah yeah have you thought about selling it or, or are you gonna keep it around it's not to a good quality. I mean, I did, I didn't put any decals on it. Um, it's missing things. Like, I put it just to the point where I'd be happy with it. So if I was going to sell it, I'd probably have to put a little more work into it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and oh, I experimented. Was... Oh, I was going to say I experimented too. There was a mod that you could get a uh, uh, Xbox Connect and put that under the glass, and it look at your face and it figure out what angle to render the screen at so it looks three D. Oh my God! However, it's it. I mean, in it sounds like it worked great. My experience is it didn't, and it would be <laughs> glitchy because all of a sudden, you know, webcams can be. It'll if it, it'll predict where you're at, and all of a sudden you're over here, and then you know it flicks. Right. All of a sudden you see the things flicker, flicker, and you're like, okay, I can't really play like this. All you need to do right. is make a uh, Matrix game that is no longer a bug; it's a feature. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so you you were talking about uh, you know the possibility of putting work into that machine. Uh, mm -hmm. Earlier, you mentioned that at least one of your machines has some some parts going bad. Where yeah. are you at as far as uh, like skilled with um, with with doing pinball repair? Oh, sure. Things? So um, when I was talking about the uh, F14 machine, the reason I sold that is I was starting to have parts of the game go bad. Um, and at the time I didn't really want to do that cause I'm just, I wasn't that good at electrical repair. Um, so I had a friend come over and help solder a piece and actually got one working. And then a few weeks later, more stuff went wrong. So, and at the time money was tight too. And I'm like, I don't want to spend $300 on a new board for it. Um, mm -hmm. so I just decided, okay, let's just unload it and go virtual. Then that way, if it breaks, I know computers, like I can fix it. <laughs> so I felt more at home doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but now with uh, the two older machines from the 70s, um, first off, the $6 million man, I had one flipper that had the um, the stop. I think it's the stop or end of stroke switch. So when a flipper you hit to flip, it's full power to that solenoid until it reaches the end of this thing. And then it's usually like one-tenth of the power because that way it doesn't mm -hmm. burn out the coil because it's already up in the air. Um, I the end coil switch didn't work. So it was hundred percent power the whole time. So when he mm. flipped, you see the power of the, like the lights on the table dim and you hear, eh, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I had to replace that and it's working. So I'm happy. But <laughs> the, the other one is just doing the weirdest things and it's so hard to trace. And I'm like, you know, eventually when I, I have the motivation, I'll figure it out. But old machines have a lot more wires um, and a lot more things can go wrong over time. The, the machine has been shopped, so it's been, you know, worked on, and it has upgrades that are great, but it's just trying to backtrack and figure out, okay, if I turn it on, sometimes it doesn't fully boot. What does that mean? And also sometimes, right right now, all the lights come on, and everything goes, and you hit the start button, you hear the, ch -ch -ch, like the machine gets ready, but no mm. solenoids will work. So the <laughs> oh. power to the solenoids are not, it's not working, and from what I've seen, it's the or whatever the bridge rectifier boards. So I have to go through and figure that out. And it's like, ah, oh, Jesus, you know, the new yeah. ones aren't like that. I mean, they're all, and I don't know if you've seen what the inside of the new ones are. You know, back. So I have a Mustang machine from 2014, which is one of the last ones on their solid state type equipment. So it's a you know a lot of boards. The new ones are all running on literally an ARM processor. It looks like an oversized Raspberry Pi board. Mm, and that's mm -hmm. everything. And it runs through network cabling to node boards. And then that goes out to things. Um, the downside, though, is some of those parts are pretty expensive. And if one little thing goes wrong on them, sometimes you'll have to just replace the whole thing. You know, but I still think overall they've been so reliable. Uh, I haven't had to do any repairs on these new ones. <sighs> nice. 
Nice. So, so, well, speaking of new machines, do you have anything on your wish list? Anything you want to add to the collection here in the near future? I mean, definitely Rick and Morty if it comes available. <laughs> I really would like that mm -hmm. one. Um, they did just the newest one from Stern is Led Zeppelin. They just did a Led Zeppelin pinball. Um, I looked at though, it's like I appreciate their music, but I just don't feel that that machine is pretty impressive. And people can go online and look mm. and see for themselves, but it, mm. it's cool. You know, don't get me wrong. Everything they do has a very neat style to it, but it just didn't impress me to the point of wanting to spend money because um, this hobby is uh, it, it drains your bank account. A new one is six thousand dollars starting. Um, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, or yeah. a limited edition one's gonna be closer to ten. Jeez. And some of these hard to find ones yep. are, I kid you not, selling for twenty thousand or higher. Yeah, because you yep. can't get them. Um, and even two days ago, someone actually messaged me on the the Pinside website and said, hey, are you selling the Mustang machine? I'm like, no, no. And I know it's a hard to find one now, but I'm like, no, I, I like it. I got it. I got it flashed with a custom ROM and I changed and added unlicensed music to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. So, nice. you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, neat stuff you can do. Like um, there's a, there's a big fan thing for modifying the game. So right now on the Jurassic Park, it's all like pre-rendered graphics. If you want to, hack it and have the real movie stuff added on top. Someone did it. Ah. Um, oh, wow. And you have to um, you have to reach out to him so he can send you the file or link you to it. But if Stern sees you streaming that, you are in huge trouble because you just violated the term. And they will they will go after you and probably try to scare you, at least. Yeah, I haven't heard right. of people already being sued, but... Yeah. yeah. Uh, Stephen Cogswell in the chat says that Black Knight from Williams is his favorite table. Oh, yeah. I love that one. I actually have the current one, the Black Knight Sword of Rage. Mm, and that I one haven't actually has, seen that one. So Scott Ian from Anthrax and Brendan Small from Death Clock, um, they did the music for it. So it's all like death metal. It's it's crazy. Oh, wow. That nice. is freaking awesome. And uh, you actually get to fight the Black Knight on this one. So the knight is in the center of the table and has a lance that has two pinballs on it. So it'll spin and try to knock the ball back or, you know, at, but the amount of lines he recorded, it, it's hilarious. So throughout throughout the progression in the table, he's a real badass. You know, like, oh, bring it on. And then all of nowhere, he's like, I have three children. You know? <laughs> I know. Why, why don't we sit down and talk? And, he starts <laughs> and then, uh, oh, then if hilarious. you drain the ball, there's like, there has to be like 10, 20, or 30 like outlaying things. But one of them is like, stop being such a baby. He starts making all these weird sounds, and it's loud. <laughs> so he'll mock you and it's yeah it's it's pretty funny oh that's fantastic Hilarious. but it's hard to top the original the original was amazing um there's also black knight 2000 which was um all i can say is look online for the music remix of that they had a that's one of the most popular in my mind music from a plastic pinball i think it was the mortal Kombat guys did the like the music tracks for it so mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Cogswell says like Blues Brothers 2000s, but not. Uh, yeah, I think they, I think he's referring to Black Knight 2000. He, yeah. Well, everything. Everyone was trying to do 2000. That's right. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that too. Again, trailing on, but uh, there was the Pinball 2000 from Williams. They were trying to do everything to bring pinball into the, like the new century. And they decided, hey, how about if we make a pinball table that has a CRT up above and a mirror, like a mirrored angle, so you could shoot at stuff and it react with a screen. So they did that for Episode One, Star Wars, and then they also did a version of Attack from Mars called Revenge. Mm. I think Revenge from Attack. I don't know, whatever. I can't get the <laughs> the name right on that, but it was pretty cool. I got to play the the Revenge one. Um, it was at our local arcade and. It, it didn't save the company, though. That was their last hope trying to trying to do it, but just didn't work right. out. Right. Yeah. What, what's speaking the, of Attack from Mars, that's one of my favorite tables, actually. What What is the most innovative thing you've seen recently in pinball, like in traditional mm -hmm. pinball machines? So the Guns N' Roses one, something I thought was pretty cool is, you know, like normally there's rollover targets and you'll see like a little metal thing sticking out of the table as it rolls over. They figured out how to do a light that also has coil underneath it. So if it rolls over the target, it knows. It doesn't have to touch it. It just, it's like kind of a, I don't mm. know, metal detector type effect. 
So that's what that machine has, which is pretty neat. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's kind of a game changer. Um, I'm always a sucker for when something gets uh, like a ball gets catapulted through the air. I had a Houdini machine that I sold recently, but it would shoot like you shoot into this thing. All of a sudden the lights are going off and you'll see the ball literally go shoot two feet through the air inside the game and into a chest and the chest would close. Oh, wow. So I don't know. (laughs) That's cool. Yeah. Strange ball mechanics is fun. Um, Even, you know, stuff with magnets. Um, I have on the black Knight. there's magnet save. Um, I mm. think there's a few that actually had that too. But if the ball was about to go down the full out lane, you'd smack the button and it actually kind of take the ball and line it up with the, the in lane so you can actually get the ball back. Okay. Nice. Now, yeah. Are, yeah, I've, are, I've seen some, some different magnet mechanics. Are all pinballs yeah. the same? Like as far as the, the ball itself, or is there different weights to them depending on the game? Like are they um, di- different compositions? Like I, I know so sure. little about pinball. Like this is all fascinating to me. But that's that's great question. So most every game has the same size. Now there are some games that have a mini play field, like some of the one, new one from uh, Munsters uh, that Stern made a few years ago. I think it's one mm. one or two years ago. Uh, the premium version has an extra little mini pinball underneath the main one, and mm. it's it's um, Grandpa's laboratory, and <laughs> y- the ball will shoot around and it's like half scale. I forgot the the size, but it's all miniaturized. Um, the only other one that really comes to mind that was different than a normal pinball is the Twilight Zone pinball from the '90s. That one had a power ball. They called it power ball, but it's a ceramic ball. So oh. when, and it knew when it came into play, cause it actually had a metal detector when it launched the ball. So it'd know like, Oh crap, this is a power ball. So the game would react differently. And the goal is okay. to get when that came out to get it back into the gumball machine. So huh. just kind of neat stuff. But yeah, that, that played different ceramic ball reacts quite differently. <laughs> then, then essentially a steel ball bearing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Man, I didn't, I didn't realize that. that that's freaking cool. Nice. Wow. Um, what else? Amos, do we got any uh, any other must know from Dan uh, before we start wrapping up? Uh, he's got 10 million different projects going on all the time. And I would suggest if you ever want to have a conversation with a guy that knows entirely too much about whatever subject you want to talk about, Reach out to him on Discord or hit him up on Twitter because Dan's the dude, man. He knows all the things. I had to do a lot of yeah. different things. <laughs> I mean, I'm no expert, but I, it's amazing how many times that just I can at least help and steer people in the right way. Or you know, and, and uh, not only that, but even if he doesn't know it, he has some experience with the problem type, and he can kind of steer you in the idea direction you need to go. Like mm-hmm. I've never, I've never been like, "Hey, Dan, what do you think about this?" And he'd been like, "Oh, nothing. Go away." <laughs> <laughs> that's not that's not a thing so uh yeah and yeah. uh once again dan uh many thanks to you for getting us started on the old uh dc tv and getting us a spot and, and and cementing our presence in diamond club and i hope we have made you proud with the streamathon and all the other things that we've done oh yeah it's it's been amazing to see the community still go even though what it was is not what it is now it's morphed it's adapted um it's yeah, I, I I don't know if it's I I'm not around as much, so I don't know all about everything that's different. But the good people are still around, um, and as always, it's a strong community. And yeah, I'm happy to have have been a big part of it, and now just sitting by the sidelines and focusing on work and all the other stuff because I went from having no responsibility at the time of starting DCTV to being in charge of 17 other people. So yeah, I have to, I unfortunately <laughs> have to prioritize. Um, you know what I do, but I love I love talking to people on social media, and I, uh, yeah, I love I love to tweet. So <laughs> yeah. feel free feel free to follow me for random random things. And, and for for those unfamiliar with your social media, where where would they find you? That would be twitter.com slash sergeant muffin s g t m u f f i n. And if people ask where that came from, it was a random random idea. <laughs> yeah, um, kind of regret picking that name uh but it's uh it's stuck with me when you do too many things as a name you can't just you know go unless you're prince where you can do ours formerly known as prince but i yeah i i that's, can't change my name that's, that's what so i yeah. should that, that's what i should do ken i should be the artist formerly known as ethan kane 
formerly known as Amos, formerly known as Anthony. <laughs> yeah, that can and, be and, Yeah, and, and now in the future known as uh, Blarney Khufu. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. Somebody write that down. <laughs> going to forget that one. I'm sorry. The artist formerly known as Amos, formerly known as Cooper. Twice removed. Uh, yeah, twice yeah. removed. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter and Ritual Misery on Twitter to follow the show. Yeah, and you can find everything that I do, including my Insta page and Twitter and everything else, at anthonylemos.com. Hell yeah. Go to ritualmisery.com for everything that we are doing as a brand and as a show and, and all of that good stuff. Uh, we are live weekly now on Sundays at 4 p.m. Pacific on twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. Yep. And uh, thank you for listening. For Kent, for Sergeant Muffin, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Oh, Kevin McLeod, you're the man. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y that's me. <laughs> oh yeah, man, I, I am so show. glad that we had Stephen Cogswell in the chat like the entire show today. Like usually when we see him, he shows up, then he's got to go, or he shows up halfway through. We had we had St- the Stephen Cogswell in the chat <laughs> the whole time. That's amazing. Thank you so much for showing up, Stephen Cogswell. Absolutely, always a pleasure hanging out with Cogswell. Oh my God! And then he goes and throws a bunch of subs in there. Ah, so awesome. He's oh, so awesome. Jeez, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Just, just the best of people. Just awesome. I don't get ads anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Oh All man. Right. So, uh, rmp.showbot.tv to pick a title. Right now, we've only got one title suggestion. So, um, and I kind of like it.